Uh, our company is called Chandler Thanks. We have Instagram on there. And Toys, Toys to Rangers is our Twitter handle if you want to follow us along that. Good deal. Now, actually, I live in Franklin, Tennessee. The short Franklin, Tennessee. Has anybody been there? Cool. Did y'all spend your money a little bit when you visited? I always ask groups. It's very important. I'll, I'm proud of my place as well. I definitely want to feel the economy, so I'm a promoter of my place. And know what we're talking about. So that's where uh, where I live and, and, uh, and uh, where we're located, our office. Like I said, we're a place marketing company. I don't want to talk too much about it. I just want you to know that I just didn't decide to talk about this today for the heck of it. It's what we do for a living. So we, we do a lot. Of, we work, we're a place marketing company. That's all we do. We're not an ad agency that works in healthcare and bowling balls and Clorox bleach. We, we work with places. So I'm uh, so very much excited to be here with you all today and part of your all's curriculum. Uh, no doubt about it. Yeah, we've worked with a bunch of places, no doubt about it. And in Georgia, done a little bit of work in uh, Columbus, Delonica, Douglasville, Megan, Marl, Perry, as far as the branding route goes. So if you like what's going on, so those places in their branding work, cool. If you don't, sorry. Uh, part of it for sure, and we work all over the country, so it's kind of a fun gig. You know, so place branding is definitely popular. We see it all the time. I don't know if you, I, I subscribe to stuff because what we do. You always see you know, these unveiling. Someone unveils a new logo. Uh, Colorado Springs logo unveiled. I don't know if you all follow along with what happened in Rhode Island a few years ago. Uh, this was led by the Department of Tourism for the state. Major fiasco about that logo, which I really like, by the way. We had nothing to do with any of these. Uh, but it was pretty, pretty uh, crazy fallout. Uh, promise me this, or, or trust me, when you all go through a branding process, do not use the word unveil. Don't unveil a logo. All right? Now, we're built to do that, especially in the municipal world. Because uh, we finish our garage, you got to unveil a new garage. Uh, or, you know, we're used to building things. Uh, when you get into branding, there's not a tangible thing, so you, we all gravitate to this logo. Uh, but unfortunately, what that does is that puts the logo on a ridiculous pedestal that it wasn't created to uh, meet. You, you can't meet expectations. I promise you there's plenty of people that cannot stand this logo I wrote out. I like it. I think it's a good logo. Guess who's right? All of us. You ever look at a piece of artwork? Which is what it is. Right? This is artwork. The whole art has an intent. Um, you're going to disagree with people. But if you put a logo up on a pedestal and say, here's our new branding, it says, first of all, you probably paid money for it. And no matter how much you pay, it's too much when my brother's a graphic designer and could do as good a job as that. Right? Um, so you, the criticism will be incredibly high. And reality is, uh, we don't remember a place because it has a great logo. I'll prove that to you in a second. But yeah, you'll see this all the time. So you have major risk, watch out. Uh, if you're stakeholders, board members, if you have those, city council members, your residents think that your brain is about a logo, um, you are at high risk. Check this out. Malaysia defends hideous tourism logo. The great Plano logo debate continues. Taxpayer upset about new city logo, make Brownsville go boom. Right? Right? Just because it's late, I can, I can kind of go a little bit more, a little over the top maybe. How about this one? A hard look at Oak Park's proposed logo. Nothing says welcome home like a penis shaped municipal logo. <laughs> Trust me, if you, uh, I know the designer of this logo, so I get great joy to tell him that I put his logo in my presentation as an example. Yes, if you Google Oak Park, Illinois, about their logo, you'll find a much, much, much media coverage about this. It gets worse, no doubt about it. Um, State Capitol on lockdown after angry graphic designers protest new tourism logo, right? The State Capitol was put on lockdown after hundreds of angry graphic designers and artists stormed the governor's office demanding the governor withdraw the state's new tourism logo. Hundreds of artists chained themselves outside the office. One artist was arrested after spray painting the previous logo on the side of the mansion. That's crazy. Man, I'm telling you, I do this for a living. I almost got run out of town for one Georgia community because they hated our logo so much and they hated what we did. By the way, everyone loves it now. They forgot and moved on to the next thing they were complaining about. Trust me, if you went, and all of us have cave people, right? Citizens against virtually everything, right? We all have cave people. And if you, yeah, I know, 
they, they, they'll look at it, she's like, oh, I'm writing that down, cave hey, people. Man, right, let's do it. Uh, you want to bring the cave people out the woodwork? Give them a piece of art to criticize. Are you choked up about this part? <coughs> Excuse me. You can't win an art debate, period. Not because you're right or wrong. That's uh, the way it is. Rebranding doesn't fix roads. What are we doing this project for? I've got potholes. Like, you can't do more than one project at a time and make your community better. Um, so there's egos everywhere. Here's why this happens. Your constituents, your community, learned what branding was. You learned what branding was by watching TV. Right? We, we watch McDonald's, Coca-Cola. Th this is what they think. Branding is about, give me a cool logo, and they can't relate. Why is that going to make our community better? It's not. If branding's all about a logo, it's not going to make your community any better. So, but that's what they're trained after. That's what you have to combat if you go through it. Here's the deal. Branding a city, is, I believe, is the most difficult branding assignment on the face of the earth. It's more difficult than Coca-Cola and McDonald's ever had. First of all, they had about $50 million a year for 20, 30 years or more. Um, but the rules of branding are already stacked against you as a municipality. There's three fundamental reasons what they are. Number one, you don't own your name. Like if we were gonna come up with a new product right now, the first thing we do is, after we had the idea, we brainstorm about a cool name. And we're not gonna settle on something that someone else has and goes, yeah, but you know, we're different. No, you get this really cool name. Well, you shared your name with everybody. Even with some key organizations that are also representing your community. Chamber of Commerce, uh, if it's not part of the city already, tourism, economic development, not to mention all the company, little bit of the businesses in town, right? There's probably a LaGrange Wheel and Tire, right? LaGrange Donut Shop. Every address of every business and individual is what we get reported on. And people know us whether it's the municipal behind it or not. Because the municipality is both an organization that has employees, provides goods and services like any other company, but it's also a place that is near and dear to every single person. Well, it makes it highly, highly emotional um, when you're talking about my place, even though you're talking about your organization. You have to do both. So we don't own our name. Strike one. Number two, we don't have control over our product. Right? I know what Coca-Cola tasted like 10 years ago. If I drink it today, I know what it's going to taste like. And I already, I already know what Coca-Cola is going to taste like in 10 years. Right? Product consistency. Classic brand building uh, philosophy right there. Right? Yet, someone says, you know, yeah, I visited Millen or Columbus or Macon. Or LaGrange, some of us, the first thing you're going to ask is, how'd you get here? What road did you get off on? What was your entry to downtown? Or who did you come in contact with? Haven't we done this before? In fact, you have. You ever visited somewhere else and just didn't get a good treatment from whoever you came in contact with? And what did we all say? Those people are so rude. We, we, we gave that label to the entire community. It happens to us. It happens to our towns. Right? We don't have control of our product. What someone does affects your image. The news does this to us all the time. Ferguson, Missouri is a great place. Great place. I've lived there with my kids, but they're in the South. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, they, they, they were labeled pretty heavily. It's a rough place, it's not safe. It's, I could be further from the truth, it's a fantastic city. All right, this happens all the time on the news. Of oh, some big incidents, and I need to say that very respectfully, right? Those are extreme events, but when you don't proactively manage your reputation, someone else will do it for you. And number three, we have no hierarchy of direction. Coca-Cola has a CEO that says, here's what we're gonna do. Kind of the good, the great principle of Jim Collins, right? Here's what we're going to do. If you're not on the bus, get off. Bye. We can't do that. We can't do that at the city level. We can't, we can't make everyone in our community play along. 
Now, just up the road from Franklin is this little town called Nashville, right? Did you know we met it, when I used to live in Nashville? There was never a letter from the mayor that said, "Hey, can you all do us a favor? We need you all to say Music City all the time when you're talking about Nashville country music. We need you. In fact, if some of you all could change the name of your business to Music City instead of Chandler Wheel and Tire, that would really help out our brand. No." Everybody just did it. Why? Because Nashville is Music City, right? But I'll say, you know why Nashville's Music City? Because it is. Well, you can't, you can't make everybody do it. Your story to your community is something that has to be organic, has to be really there, right? But you can't go through the whole rebranding process and say, this is what we're about, and you're going to use it, community. You can't, Chamber of Commerce, you're going to be on board with us. You can't, you can't make them do it, right? It's kind of Fundamental, just classic branding and marketing for any company. You own your name, you have you have you create your product, have complete control of it, and everybody follows your path. And we can't do any of those things. Makes branding in this kind of pretty difficult. Um, and I try to illustrate that just real quick. Um, this is a typical the place branding role, roles of any municipality. At the top of the place organizations, the municipalities that exist, tourism, economic development, downtowns. Chamber of Commerce, their job, their existence is to promote the reputation of the community. Would you agree? All right, that's, that's what they that's what they do. Uh, then you have place associations or institutions. Their job isn't to promote the community, but their success does. Healthcare is a great example. Schools, uh, some nonprofits, uh, the, the fin finance actually banks are a big part of that. Right, they're promoters of the community for sure but they're doing it for their business purposes. Below that, you have businesses that I already gave some examples of that, that simply use your community name, your reputation, to leverage their own self-interest, right? I want to be known as the authority in banking in LaGrange. I'm going to call myself LaGrange Bank and Trust, right? I'm not really trying to build up the reputation of LaGrange. I just want to be known as the name, right? So you have a lot of businesses that do that. You'll notice a community, the more people that use the community's name usually means they're all, you, you have this pretty large swell of people promoting the community. And lastly, uh, but most important, are, the, are just the people. People that are what we call place origin. People that say, I am from LaGrange. I am from Macon. Right? There's, that's where the masses are. The problem is, in most branding efforts for a city, all the efforts to brand a city are at the top. But all the people, the volume of people who are naturally the word of mouth that you want, at the bottom, they're, they're usually not on the same page. So as a result, the city brand, the place brand, is going to be a little rocky. It's going to be unstable. Because not everybody's on the same page of what they're saying. What you want is obviously something that looks like this. Right? Where I can tell you now, a place that has their people, their residents and the local businesses, all telling the same story, not sharing the same logo, telling the same story, that's the, those are the communities that are strong. Mm -hmm. The places that have strong identities because people are proud to be from there, they promote it, and they tell about all the wonderful things of why you need to come visit. Mm -hmm. This is the model of Great Place Branding. And when that happens, there's not as much responsibility on the shoulders of the people at the top to create and promote the brand. They simply will focus on the experiences of place making. That's the difference in a strong municipal brand and one that struggles. Most of us operate it, the other one, unfortunately. Uh, my definition of place branding is the purposeful orchestration of a place to positively affect its image, build its reputation by exploiting the wonderful things that you have and creating shared experiences that are attractive to, this is very deliberate, the order is very deliberate, to residents first, you have to serve your citizenry first, the businesses of your community, and visitors. It's easy to get excited about visitors. I do a lot of business in the tourism world. Reality is you make a great place great to your citizenry, the rest will start to follow, right? But it's everything that you do. It's not about advertising, it's not about a logo, it's every single thing that you do. You try to create shared experiences, all right? Uh, so give me a, what do you think of a strong place brand destinations in Georgia. Interact with me a little bit. Not all at once, please. Don't talk over each other. 
Greenville, for sure. Okay. What else? Savannah. Jekyll. I get jealous of Jekyll, so now you've got knowledge of like little peachy ways. What's that? I'm just joking. What's that? Uh, Athens. Athens, no doubt about it. Great example there with Athens. Oh, let's use Savannah. Tell me about Savannah. Group, class. Tell me about it. Players. Beautiful. What was it? Historic. Historic. What did you say here? Squares. 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 Bars. 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 Keep on. The river. Tell me something more about the river. Ships, cargo ships. Ships, cargo ships. What do they do certain, uh, once a year? Turn the river green. They turn the river green? Everybody does that. No, they don't. That's kind of unique. Like this crazy St. Patrick's Day. Keep going. Tell me more. What kind of food am I going to eat? Really good food. Southern and seafood. Um, keep going. Holiday. Ivy. Ivy. Tidy Island, excuse me, yes. Uh, movies, people can associate with movies, maybe? Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil? Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, there you go. So, I think it's a pretty strong place for him. Can we all agree? Yeah. Would we like for to sit in a room somewhere else in Georgia, and I mentioned your community, and they just said all those things about your community? Would you like that? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And we did. And, and, and they wanted to put all these things in. We're like, okay, we'll do it. And the logo was this uh, whimsical profile of a face. And at the top of each follicle was an icon. So we had a little, so the hair was coming out at the top of the hair. One strand of hair was an ampersand sign for an online company that was there. And the top of another hair was uh, an airplane. Another one was a cow. Another one were grapes. Sound ridiculous? Yes. You know what would be a great idea? We could create an entire portfolio of icons. And depending on who we're talking to in the community, we'll insert different icons there. It's, it was even more ridiculous, right? Um, reality is, I'm not going to tell you who it is because I think they went. Somebody's going to use it. Uh, but a logo is supposed to, I always tell people, it should be interesting. It should, be, it should reflect the spirit of your community. It shouldn't tell the whole story. That's what other communications are for. Be interesting enough so people want to know the rest of the story. Don't try to shove it all down their throat with a logo or a tagline. Yet we do that. Uh, it's the expectation of, well, that, that logo doesn't reflect our community. What would? Well, there's so many things. No, put the logo in its place. I actually love the Savannah logo because they went simple and didn't try to do it. It's way too rich of a brand to try to put that into a logo for sure. All right. That means that, yeah, food, cool stuff, architecture, events, things worth bragging about. All right, don't forget, architecture is super, super, super important. You know, the first impression of a city is usually what they see when they walk in. It's why preservation of buildings are so important. You know, the exact same building, um, if it's taken care of, makes me feel safe and that there's a sense of purpose and there's a story. But the exact same building that wasn't taken care of makes me fearful and feel unsafe. All right, it immediately sends a message to people. Um, we talked about that, move on. Yeah, so there are some examples. Uh, I mean, you all know Nashville. Nashville's not uh, a fair example, but it's one we can all understand and apply apply what, what they're doing to your own community, your own story. And again, not everybody has a music capital where I get that. But, you know, in Nashville, there's, there's signs that indicate where all the live music venues are. Right? Why? Because the music is the story of Nashville. Well, you have a story. What is your guitar pick? What signs could you have a guitar pick at? That doesn't make sense. That's Nashville. Well, ask Macon. Macon, Georgia right now are installing Soul Stops all from their community in downtown. Why? Because this wonderful, great, soulful story of making Georgia can be told all over the place. And you may not know it, but they're putting up a signage program around their, their brand, their story, so you know if here's something significant happened. Or you may not know that Little Richard washed dishes at this place. Right? You may not know that Greg Allman proposed to share the booth of the Capitol Grill. Right? Uh, yeah, of course our minor league baseball team are the sounds, right? Um, yeah, we got a walk of fame. Yeah, we have honky tonks. That's not downtown Nashville. That's in our airport. Of course, of course Nashville has honky tonks in our airport. Yeah, the business of music is rich in Nashville. So we have the Country Music Association, the Bluegrass Music Association, the Gospel Music, and we even are home to the Barbershop Harmony Society. If I had more time, I'd break out some good fun by coming out of the baby, but I've got to move on. But the business of music is in Nashville. That's who we recruit from an economic development standpoint. Sure, we have attractions. If you want an education in music, Belmont University is one of the top universities in the country for getting that. So yeah, it's absolutely part of our education system as well. Right? And sure enough, that second picture is my, we're actually my favorite. Um, everybody has a parking garage, but it, it's across the street from the Renaissance Hotel. You park in that parking garage. The floors are named after country music legends. Now, that's kind of a lesson taken out of probably six flags, right? And the Yogi Bear lot, right? Um, but, but we could do that. We, those of us that have parking garages, don't forget, don't forget a guest in your community. That's the first time they get out of the car. I'm at the Patsy Klein floor. Oh, cool. Downtown Nashville is filled with music. If you're if you're not if you're on the main drag, they don't pipe it in because there's already music loud all over the place. But within a three block perimeter of Nashville, um, they actually have embedded speakers all through downtown. Yeah, because you'd expect that for music city. Did you need to get a wake up call at the uh, Hampton Inn on Twenty First Avenue? 
from a country music singer. I don't know who gets wake up calls now either, but kind of a good story, right? And you have public art, such a big role. We have bicycle racks that look like the wires of a microphone and treble clef sons. Our National Technology Council's annual awards, that's what that lady is holding, that's her trophy, because she won Technology Partner of the Year. They're guitars, right, with their logo on, with the National Technology. None of these are the Nashville official logo. None of them are even a tagline. It's just an idea. it's our story. And, and depending on who's telling it, tells that story in a different way. Yes, when we build a convention center, the top has a gigantic guitar on top of it. And even big brands, Truck Stops of America, the, the largest brand of truck stops across the country, they don't use advertising like this all over the country. But when people drive in and out and all the world looks the same, especially on the interstates, they know that if you're going to get the, their competitive advantages, if you stop at Truck Stops of America in Nashville, even there, you'll get, your, you'll get yourself a little bit of Music City. So they leverage the Nashville brand as their competitive reason why truckers should stop there over other places, right? And the, even the bigger brands do it. Coca-Cola, I promise you, most Coca-Cola trucks do not look like this. But in the Nashville area, they do. Why? The key to beverage distribution is actually local relationships. They understand that, for sure. So you'll see big brands do it, and sure enough, Last I checked, we have 166 businesses called Music City something. Right. <laughs> Music City Septic. Dang it, if you're going to need septic services in Nashville, you might as well call it Music City. And one thing is when they come, they actually sing, too. Right, they do. Man, I'm glad you mentioned that. My next don't do this. I'm coming up with a good joke for that. Right? <laughs> Music City Motors, right? And sure enough, I hear this all the time. We need to do a brand new project because we need to look like we're unified. And I agree, you should. We want the city, we want economic development, tourism chamber, we want everybody involved. And I can tell half the time they're saying we all want the same logo. We need the same logo. I'm not against it. I'm not against it at all. But I'll tell you right now, it's not necessary. What's, because each organization has their own local brand they need to build. And yes, it does look like you play together on the design. <laughs> if you all have the same logo, you won't fool people. If you don't play together, everyone does it. Okay? But I look at, I, there's a collection of a lot of different organizations in Nashville. They all use one common story, don't they? But they're not the same logo. I believe it makes it look like it's a more authentic place. Like the story is woven all throughout. I don't feel like they don't work together because they all have the same logo. And, right? And I've got young professionals, I've got chamber, I've got economic development, I've got tourism, I have all everybody. So it's all it's really about authentic experiences. Uh, so when you look at branding, I'm gonna challenge you to look at the people, the attractions, of course, events, the, the types of businesses that you have, uh, the type of architecture, all of that stuff is where your story is told. That's where your branding needs to take place. So yes, your public works director might be one of the most important people in the branding of your city. Because he or she is the person who's administering the RFPs about a new parking garage going up. You know how much more that parking garage cost versus an, another one that didn't have the floors named after the, Nothing. All it took was forethought. All it took was, listen, they're going to put a sign up anyway. They have to tell you what floors are. It's just what you put on. So it's having the forethought of when we're going to build something, does it need to have something that reflects our character? Not where can we put a logo on it? Right? You can do it through design, art. There's a lot of different ways for you to weave your story into a lot of things that you build in your community. Um, so that being said, you should be involved in branding a place. It's an obvious question, right? Everybody. Everybody. That means you maybe need to assemble a, like a, a, a place branding committee, organization. I know committees are bad words. I don't know. I get that. But do you have everybody at the table? Is everybody working together to create this common story? They're not going to want to use the common logo. They shouldn't. So education is really now some, some places are completely defined by education, right? Athens, Georgia. Right? Now you all know a lot about Athens. 
Uh, the further you go, most people don't, they only know one thing. Do you know two things about Gainesville, Florida? Sorry. Do you know, right? Do you know two things about Lexington, Kentucky, or Bloomington, Indiana? Some, some places are completely defined by university and higher education. It's looking completely, that they have different branding challenges, right? Uh, civic leadership, absolutely a big part of a, of a community's reputation. Do you play well together or not? Do you have a lot of red tape? Is it tough to get things done? That's not always a bad thing. Believe it or not. City down, you want to do, get something done in downtown Franklin, Tennessee? Be ready, hope you're not in a hurry. And they're very proud of it. And they tie it back to their heritage and what they've been able to create in their downtown. So they, they're very strict and they're almost positions of the high standard. So it all works together, right? Did you know that there's actually official horse parking in downtown Fort Worth? Fits their brand, doesn't it? By the way, there's also official designated Corvette parking in downtown Bowling Green, Kentucky. There should be, on the Corvette. So yeah, yeah, so policy can actually affect your brand. You can create policy, right, that says this is, this is important to us and what we do. So I think it's super important. Obviously the people, a little reminder to all you Southern folks, people that are not from here want to hear you talk. All right? Uh, I got nothing compared to you guys, but when I travel outside the South, I have to say y'all within the first two sentences when they won't listen to anything I say. They're waiting on it. They want sweet tea, y'all, how y'all do, you doing? Well, they, they really get riled up by how y'all doing, right? All y'all, they'll, they'll fly over the top if you say all y'all, right? <laughs> uh, so lay it on thick. Do not, do, just because it's you're in the middle of all of it, and guess they want to hear it. They love the Southern hospitality and the charm, no doubt about it. Uh, in all seriousness, your people are a big part of it. Um, and it, it's easy to go, oh, we're home of, you know, Joe DiMaggio was here, or whomever. Um, uh, it's, but reality is people love friendly people. My example from earlier, those people are so rude. We also do the same thing. Those people are so nice. I can't wait to go back. Um, how you make people feel is a, is a personal thing more than anything else, right? And then lastly, quality of life. You know, just because we're not a big city doesn't mean we don't have quality of life that's not appealing to people, right? We found out, we did some research in Franklin, Tennessee, and we found out uh, the, the surprising number of guests, yeah, we got our share that came down from Nashville, but we have a big group of people that are from small towns, and they came to Franklin because t Franklin was this small town on steroids, if that makes any sense. But the juxtaposition against Nashville made Franklin more appealing, and then we really appeal to people from small towns want to visit other small towns, right? Uh, your quality of life really matters, uh, your parks, uh, whether you have traffic or not. So if you fill all this out, you're going to get all these players in your community that are all part of delivering your brand. Seguin, Texas actually created a team called the Branding Rangers, right? And it was they filled in that little place branding wheel, not just the people that work for the city, not just tourism, but they realized that our entire community tells a story. So they assembled the Branding Rangers uh, to help make sure they can find opportunities to tell their story with local businesses, public and private. All right. Kentucky Lake did the same thing. They actually had a big sign up. They be a part of it. Fundraisers. They had uh, 5Ks and things like that where people could actually contribute to branding the city, right? Uh, or the county. Uh, and the last thing I'll say is package and promote. Uh, again, how I opened up. Branding your place is about bragging about where you live, and that's fun. Don't forget to have fun. People don't remember, they don't want to hear marketing and branding. The words, that Sounds like educational textbook, yucky yuck, you know, coffee consultants that want to brand everything, right? Um, just have fun. Everybody can have fun with where they live. Dublin, Ohio. That's this, where I came from. I just moved here, but I worked there for... No way. Yeah. Dublin, Ohio. Okay, what do you say about Dublin, Ohio, first of all? Every fire hydrant in town is what color? Every one of them. It's crazy. This is nuts. They have three high schools. The Nick, now high schools, you know Friday Night Football, right? We're rivalry, it's really competitive, right? Their nicknames of their three high schools are the Shamrocks, the Irish, and the Celtics. They all wear green and chalets. Are you kidding me? It's, what kind of rivalry is that, right? I mean, it's, it's a, I would say, it's a big one. It is, they're all, right. Now, now, here's the kicker about Dublin. There's not a redhead, freckled person in town. There's no Irish people in Dublin. No Irish. 
Oh, they're founded by Protestants. They're all Protestants. No Irish people. The guy that surveyed the land originally when they created the city, uh, they couldn't pay him any money. <laughs> Congratulations to him. And so his, his, his payment was he gets to name the city. Well, he's from Ireland. And voila, there you go. That's why they're Dublin, Dublin Ohio. Okay? Um, which is why they use the tagline, Irish is an attitude. <laughs> Think about it. They're not Irish, but it's their name. They're going to have fun with it. It's and not it, greener in Dublin. Greener in Dublin. It fits too, right? Absolutely. And one of the largest St. Patrick's festivals you'll ever, ever see. I mean, only Savannah and Chicago will probably rival it, I'd say, right? Am I doing the justice? Yep. Okay, cool. The third largest? See? Cool. Yeah, I got lucky on that because I didn't really know that. But, uh, uh, I mean, I knew they had a big festival. I knew they had a big Irish festival. And the city puts it on, by the way, not tourism or the city does. Uh, they actually have a website for Irish approved businesses. Why? Because when people go to Dublin, Ohio, they might have ever been there before. You know what they want? They want to get them some of this Irish cook. That's what they expect it. Like they did research and found out that the only criticism they were receiving when people said it was a nice town, but we kind of expected more Irish stuff. <laughs> well, they will never get that research back again because now they've gone all in. They still have a list of Irish approved businesses. And I know you can't read all these. I'm not going to read all of them, I promise. We talked about the Wake Up Call, Holiday Inn Express, big brand. They don't care about local stuff, right? Wrong. You can have a, uh, a leprechaun give you a wake up call. <laughs> How about that? And, and you all know what it says, right? Top of the morning. Top of the morning. Have you been there? No. I'm just but how did you know, right? Right? Um, the, I mean, it's ridiculous. They've got, um, you know, Irish corned beef and. Um, Greater's ice cream, it's, they have the Shamrock Sunday. It's now the number one selling item. Why? Wow, it's green ice cream. That's all it is. <laughs> all of us have ice cream. Not all of us have green ice cream. And that's how little franchise brand, whoever owns that little franchise in Dublin, that's how they can still be a part of the Dublin story. If branding your city, branding your place is such a good idea, it should help all of our business. I can't use your logo, it won't help my business. But I can take our story and make a Sunday cool. All right, now it's helping my business, right? That's what it should be about. Uh, and here's, here's the, uh, the easy way to do it. We all know the five senses. We learned it when we were five years old. Every person in your town, every business, every one of your departments, use at least one, if not more, of the five senses in the delivery of your products and services. That's branding. Because when you talked about Savannah earlier, you were going through this. You weren't talking about marketing and branding. You were talking about what you walk on, right? What you ate. Uh, some of this is about what you smell. I was in Beaumont, Texas, and I walked outside the restaurant I'm like, oh, oh, what is that smell? A man walked up to me and saw me kind of punching. He goes, son, that's a smell of money. <laughs> he was unapologetic. He was proud of his town. And guess what? The petroleum industry can smell. But that was that is the story. That's the story of Beaumont, Texas. He was unapologetic. That's a right? So I say that fragrances can be fun. It's the most difficult. There's actually studies on this. Um, if you can tie in fragrance with your branding, it's more memorable than all the others combined, but it is difficult. Okay? I'll give you one example of it. I'll finish up. Uh, Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, there are visitor centers downtown and, and, and in some of the shops in, there, in our downtown. Uh, there's a local candle maker. Uh, small, no, Chandler means candle maker. Uh, has nothing to do with my presentation. But anyway, uh, there's a candle maker in town. They have a bunch of candles for the, you know, to sell. The number one selling one is called 1864. 1864 is the name of the candle. Big deal. Uh, it, the Battle of Franklin is a big part of the story of Franklin, and so it was in 1864. The fragrance on the candle is gunpowder and whiskey. It smells like gunpowder and whiskey. It's actually really good. Um, even if you don't like whiskey, it, it smells great, and it flies off the shelves. People love it. Think about it. Someone visits your house, and you've got this great candle. Oh, cool, smell this. And they go, oh, that's unique. Now that person is a brand storyteller for the community in an authentic way. It has nothing to do with the tagline, it has nothing to do with the logo, it has something to do with the story. If you can tie in one of the five senses 
but how you deliver something, whether it's a wake-up call, whether it's the, uh, the almond burger. We all have a purse with a great hamburger joint, don't we? The Rookery in downtown Macon has the almond burger. Why? Because the almond burgers are part of their story. And I'm pretty sure it's the number one selling item. It's a darn good burger with a story to it. We can all be brand storytellers. And the more people you get making almond burgers, and it's in our Sundays, and building in a candle called 1864, the stronger your brand's gonna be. You don't have to be Music City. You be your story, you get as many storytellers as possible. And then, oh by the way, you can reflect that with a logo and a tag. Make sense? This is cool stuff. I better let y'all go. Alright, number one reason brand projects stall is simply one person or organization tries to do it all. Can't do it, it's impossible. Not gonna happen. Alright? Can't. Get more people engaged, the better. Number two, laying up to a logo tagline and advertising. That's not how we build with city brands. It's not going to work that way. I hope I've demonstrated that to you all. I hope that was valuable and a little entertaining. Have a good day.